in high school you would have spent some time studying probabilities. Uh, now probabilities uh, in, a, in a very basic sense are something that we deal with uh, every day. We talk about things being certain or not very likely or um, probable. Lots of We've got a lot of words to describe those things. Uh, in high school you would have dealt with probability mathematically by assigning a particular value to a probability. So formally we defined probability uh, as some kind of number uh, between 0 and 1. Okay, uh, Something with a probability of 1 or if you wanted to write it as a percentage 100% or 1 out of 1 if you wanted it as a fraction. These kinds of things are things that are certain to happen. Uh, the other end of the scale, 0, probabilities of 0 or 0%, zero oh, I've zoomed right in, let's go somewhere in between those two. Uh, something that has a probability of 0 or 0%, zero or 0 out of 1, I guess, there's lots of fractions that are equal to 0. Uh, these are things that are un, un, well, not just unlikely, impossible, things that can't happen. So, an uh, example of something that would be certain would be rolling a number less than 10 on a standard dice or something that would have a probability of zero would be rolling a seven on a standard dice. Okay, those ones are pretty easy to understand. Uh, then we'd have a bunch of other probabilities. Uh, so right in the middle we'd have things that have a one half chance or a 50% or you could write it a 0 0.5 chance. All of these are equivalent. Uh, so an example of something like that would be flipping our heads on a standard coin. Okay, and we'd have all sorts of other, you know, values we could put in on this line to describe the likelihood that things uh, will or won't happen. Also in high school, you would have formalized that kind of idea uh, using a formula like this one here, or very similar to it, uh, where you would have said the probability of an event, so of a particular thing happening, is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. Uh, to just review that, let's think about the example of rolling a dice. Uh, and let's think about the probability of the event uh, rolling an even. So rolling an even number. Okay. Um, what would the probability of that B. Let's have a look at our formula. What we need to do is we need to count up what we call the number of favorable outcomes. So in other words, the number of ways that we can do this. Well, what are our options? If I'm going to roll an even number, I could roll a 2, or a 4, or a 6. There's th three ways to do it. Okay, so the number of favorable outcomes would be 3. Uh, what about the number of possible outcomes? Well, the number of possible outcomes is 6. I could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So this, this particular option, rolling an even number, has a 3 out of 6 chance of happening, or in other words, a 1 in 2, or a 50% chance of happening. And that makes sense. So the formula works. Uh, this has been a good formula when we can easily count up these outcomes and when... Uh, obviously each outcome is equally likely. This wouldn't necessarily be the case if uh, it was a weighted dice and say, you know, four was more likely to come up than any other number or something like that. So that's something to be aware of. This only works uh, when all of the outcomes are equally li likely. Um, but, but it works pretty well. Uh, the only thing is this, this kind of a formula is a bit fluffy. It doesn't really... Uh, it's, it's not well defined mathematically. We don't like having words. We'd like to have a shorthand to define that. Uh, and that's what we're going to explore in this series of videos. We're going to look at uh, a mathematical object called a set and use that to define probability a little bit more tightly than this.